Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Looking for some fun, unique, and innovative paper crafting? You've come to the right channel. Stay tuned. Today's project is a new one for my channel. I've themed it for Valentine's Day, and I think you're going to like it. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new subscribers and to all of my new friends. Welcome back to all of my longtime subscribers and longtime friends. Thank you all so much for all of the wonderful ways in which you support me and my channel. And in particular, thank you so much for choosing to leave positive messages of support and encouragement. Positivity goes a long way, so I do appreciate it. I've been wanting to make a mailbox style box for a very long time and I finally sat down and made one and this one is a large one so it will hold your A2 size cards, your four and a quarter by five and a half inch cards and envelopes. It'll even hold a little bit larger than that. So I'm going to give you a closer look at this in just a minute but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. So here is a closer look at my version of a mailbox. When finished, it measures eight inches tall at the highest point. It is six inches this way, and it is four inches wide. So it's a pretty large box made of chipboard, so that makes it very sturdy. I rounded the top to try to give it a mailboxy look. And then we have this flap here that opens like this. And you can see on the inside, we have all of this wonderful room. So if you're looking for a really unique way to make a card box or a card set, this is perfect for that. So you can set them this way or you can stand them this way. Completely up to you. Then I just used some ephemera pieces to decorate the sides. And then I added a couple of bows, one to the back and one to the front. For some added cuteness, super, super easy to make. Here's what we're going to need to make it. So this is a chipboard project and I am using a medium weight chipboard. Guys, if you don't have chipboard, please use whatever hardboard surface you do have access to that you think might work on this project. You can try doubling up shoe boxes, cereal boxes, the likes. So my medium weight chipboard, I have a piece that is cut at three by four. I have two pieces that are cut at six by four. I have one piece that is cut at six and one eighth by four. I have two pieces that are cut at six by eight. I have one piece that is cut at six and a half by eight and a half. And then I have my decorative paper. This is a lightweight to a medium weight decorative paper and I decided to go with a non-traditional look for this mailbox using colors that you don't normally see used for Valentine's Day. So what I have are four pieces and all four pieces are cut at nine and a half by 12. I have two of each pattern because one is for the outside, one is for the inside. Then I have this mocha colored cardstock and it'll be used for the base of the box as well as the fold over flap for the top. So I have one piece that's cut at nine by 12 and I have another piece that's cut at 10 by 12. So here's how I'm going to get the rounded top. I'm just taking something that has a round surface. You can use a bowl, you can use a lid, anything that you can find that has a nice large round surface, the size that you might want your rounded top to be. It doesn't have to be the same size as mine. I'm going to place it down and then I'm just going to trace. And then I'll use my scissors and I am just going to cut, try to cut on my trace mark. And so there's one. Y'all, this won't be perfect, but it's going to be nice. So I'll place that one down, and then I'll just use it as my guide for the second one. And we'll cut this one out as well. And I'll cut on the mark, or slightly inside of the mark. 
So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some discarded backer sheet and some red paint because I want to go around these edges. And I'm just using an acrylic paint. You can use an acrylic paint that you get from anywhere for this. And then I'm just using a cosmetic sponge wedge. And I am just going to go along the top because this will be exposed. And then we just need to let that paint dry. All right, so once your paint is dry, I am going to go ahead and just place down some of my double-sided tape. And I'm going to place a piece right there. We're going to cover this completely. And I'm going to go ahead and cover both. All right, so once we have our tape on our pieces, we're going to need to bring in the two pieces that measure six by four and the two pieces that we rounded. We're also going to need to bring in two pieces of our decorative paper that measures nine and a half by 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my half inch tape and we're going to join these two pieces together. So I'm just going to take this piece, line it up with that tape to get it joined. And I'll flip it over. Beautiful double-sided paper. So when I place it down, I'm going to place it down like this. So I'll take my first piece And I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to put it down right there. So then I'll take my six by four inch piece and I'm going to place it down with about an eighth of an inch and spacing in between the two pieces like that. Then I'll take this piece I'm going to put it down with about an eighth of an inch in spacing between the two like this and then we'll take this piece and we'll put it down doing the same. So now I'm just going to trim away a little bit of this. I'll flip it over. And we're going to make sure we have that nice and stuck. Then I'm going to use my stylus to go around the bottom, just creating a score in that paper. And then I'm going to do the same thing here on the side and the same thing here. So now I'll just stand it and I'm going to go ahead and just crease or fold on that score. So now that we have our piece like this, here in this corner, we're going to angle and angle there. Then we'll go ahead and do an angle here as well as an angle there. Same thing here. I'm just going to go in and angle, angle there, and there. Then I'm going to take some tape and we're going to place some tape along the bottom here. And I'll place some tape right here. Now we can peel away the tape backers. Stand this up and fold it over. It's 
So then I'm just going to take some glue, place my glue on this piece, and fold it over, getting it stuck. And now we're going to do something a little bit differently. We're going to go to the corner of this chipboard and let's angle in like that and reduce it because we're going to fold it over. So let's go ahead and take some glue. You can use tape on this if you want. And I'm just going to fold that over. like that. Then we're going to do the same thing here in the middle. We're going to go to the end of that chipboard and angle on both sides. And then we're going to reduce this. And then we're going to fold it over just like we did that first piece. And guys, this is just an inspiration for you. You might have a little tweak that you might want to do to this, but this is a starting point for those of you who might want to tweak this part of the process. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the edge of that chipboard and cut straight across to this piece of chipboard because we are going to remove this excess paper all together. Now this is the reason why I went ahead and added some paint to the outside. So then we do the same thing here. We're just going to cut straight across to the chipboard and straight across to the chipboard and then we're just going to remove this excess. And so there we have the body, which will close like this. So now I'm going to cover the chipboard in tape. So I'm going to place down some tape strips like this. So I'll come in about half an inch and come up about half an inch and place down my tape strips. And I'm going to cover this whole thing, including the top. I'll be right back. All right, so now that we have this piece covered with tape, we're going to go ahead and take one of the nine and a half by 12 inch inside liner pieces, and I am going to add a strip of tape along the bottom. And along one side. I'm just going to take my tape and peel it back to about right there. Go ahead and remove that piece, peel that back, and we're just going to peel back all of these pieces like this. Then we're going to take this liner piece and let's go ahead and remove the tape backer from the side strip as well as the bottom strip. Then we're going to take the bottom strip and when we place it down, we're going to place it down so that it is about an eighth of an inch from the bottom as well as the side. So I'm going to get that stuck. Let's work that tape in there really, really well. I'm going to go ahead and just force it in a little bit on those spines. Now I'm going to move this over so that I can place this down because we are going to trim out the excess paper. So I'm just going to go in and trim out. And now we can remove this piece and get that nice and stuck. And now I can lift up the remaining tape strips 
So now we're going to bring in that second liner and we're really just going to match it like that. So I'm going to take my ruler, place my ruler right here. So I'm good to reduce this piece to nine and a half by eight and an eighth. Now I should be able to take it and place it down like this. So now I should be able to take my tape Place some tape along the bottom like this and some tape along this side that's going to hit right here so let's go ahead and place that tape peel away the backer Let's take this piece and I'm basically going to butt it against this piece. I'm not overlapping it, I'm just sliding it so that the two will touch like that. And just like with the first piece, I am just going to go in and trim away the excess. And so if you have a way that you want to try, go ahead and give it a try. This is the method that I'm using. So if you have an alternative method that I'm not trying here, go ahead and give it a try. And so now I'm just going to get everything nice and stuck. Then I'm going to bring in a nail file and I'm just going to go along the top and just sort of smooth out what might be a little bit of roughness from where I was cutting. You can even add some Distress Ink to this if you want. And so there we have our sweet little box. Let's go in and define those spines, getting them nice and crisp. We'll move over here, define this spine as well. And we have one more that we're going to get nicely defined and crisp. So there we have it. We can take this and fold it like this and we're going to glue it together. And I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to place it on the outside of my paper. How you choose to glue it is really completely up to you, but I'm going to do it like this. Then I'm going to take just a little bit of glue and put it right here on the end. And now we can join these two. And when I'm joining them, I'm making sure that the bottom is even. So I can flip that over. Go ahead and get that nice and stuck on the inside and you can see that by doing that I have a strip on the inside that's a different color if that bothers you you can take some of your scrap paper and place it on the inside but I'm just going to leave it and this will be the front of my box I think it's very cute I like that paper so to make the base we're going to take that piece that measures four and a half by six and a half and we're going to place it down like that and I'll stand it up like this, like this, like this, and like this. And now we can go ahead and miter those corners. You can see that I'm not even removing the manufacturer's label because it's going to be covered. So I'm just going to go ahead and miter like this on all four sides. So now we're going to fold over, fold over, fold over, and then we're going to wrap over. And I'm just going to fold this, and this will tell me how much I need to cut off. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut about 
a quarter of an inch inside of that fold line that I created. So now we're good to go. So I'm just going to take my glue and we're just going to use glue on this. So let's just go ahead and place some glue. Fold this over. Get it nice and stuck. Fold this over. Getting it nice and stuck. Fold this over. And then I'm just going to add some glue to this piece and we're going to fold it over. You can tape it if you want. I am just going to add some glue and we're going to fold it over. Then we'll go across the top. Getting it nice and square. There's our base. We should be able to take our box and place it on the base. We can. So all I'm going to do at this point is I am just going to add glue to the bottom of the box. Process you guys have probably seen me do at least 100 times, if not more. And I'm using reptile adhesive, so this adhesive is going to dry clear. If you don't have reptile, guys, use what you have. So now that we have the glue on the bottom, I am just going to take this and place it down while I have it sitting down. Then I'll pick it up and show it to you. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that on all four sides, I have my placement fairly even. So I'll need to move this around some to get that placement nice and squared. And you'll probably have to do the same thing with yours. And you can see how that glue is out. Not worried about that because it's going to dry clear. So I'm just going around making sure that I have it where it looks like it's squared. And so far so good. So I'm just going to press down and we just need to let that dry for a little bit. So I'm going to move it to the side while I bring in the lid. So now we can bring in our final two pieces of chipboard, remove the tape backer, and our last piece of mocha colored cardstock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some of that scrap cardstock because I want to go ahead and place some down here at the top of this piece. And it'll make sense in just a minute. Hopefully it'll make sense in just a minute. So I'm going to stand this up, take my glue, and I'm going to fold it over. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want this raw edge covered. So now I need to take some tape and we need to put the tape back where it was. So now I'm going to take this piece and when I place it down, I'm going to place it down like this so you can see that I have that extra room that I'm going to keep. So we're going to place it like this. Then I'll take the piece that is three by four and we're going to place it down with about an eighth of an inch in spacing in between, like that. Then I'm just going to go around and create a score in the paper. And then we can stand it up 
and get a good fold going. And now where I have the intersecting fold marks, I'm just going to do my standard miter. And so now I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to add glue to the piece that is right below that three inch piece and to the side piece. Let's go ahead and fold that over. Getting that nice and stuck. Now we're going to take this piece, let's fold it over, and you can see that we can remove just a little bit. So from the end, I am going to remove about a quarter of an inch. Then I'm just going to take some tape and just run some tape like this. And then I'll run a strip of tape right here to make sure that I have good coverage. And a strip right here. and a strip right there. So now we can peel away those backers. And now we can take this piece and fold it over. And I'll just go around those ends to make sure that I have them nice and squared. And now I just need to define this spine. So now we should be able to take this piece, put it on, and have a fit like this. So I am going to take my glue and place it on the piece that I did not fold over. Place this back in like that and then I can stick it down. Now for this piece, you can actually attach it with a magnet or you can attach it with some Velcro. And so I am going to use another magnet to close these. So I'm going to take some of my glue, place the glue on the magnet, and I'm using a 10 by 2 millimeter magnet. And I'm going to place that magnet right there. So now I'm just going to take a little scalloped circle. And we're going to put it down to cover the magnet. Like this. We really don't want that magnet coming up. We can now take something else and place it on the top of this. So I think I'm going to see if I can make this little sticker work that says, let's get together. So I'm going to put all of that in there because I want it all to be there. And then let's see if we can get that in there. So good. So now we have that sticker there that says, let's get together. I think that's a really cute way to cover that. So now I'm going to take this magnet, place it down, 
add some glue, bring this piece over, press it down, and I'm just pressing it down to get the glue impression. So now I can slide that magnet and place it in the glue and I know that it's going to be in the correct spot. So now I can take another one of my scallop circles, add some glue. Like I said, you can use Velcro for this if you want. You don't have to use um, magnets. If you don't have magnets, use what you have to close your box. And I am just going to put this down like this. Let's give those two a moment to dry. I'm going to decorate the side just a little bit. Now I have cut out some cut aparts and I want to see which ones are going to work. I think I'm going to go with this one because it's really not too intrusive. So I am just going to add some glue to that piece and then join the two together because I want it to be offset a little bit like that. Then I'm going to add my glue to the back. You can use tape. My glue just happens to be out. We're going to take that piece and place it right there. Then I'm going to flip over to the other side and do the same thing with the same look. So I'm just going to add some glue in between the two so that they stay stuck. Then I'll add my glue to the back. like this. And I think that that is pretty stinking cute. So now I'm just going to close this and you can hear that magnet click. So then I'm going to take this piece and we're going to put it right here. So let me add some glue and we'll take it and we'll put it there. And then I have these sweet little gold bows that I think are going to work right there. And then one on the back. I used my hot glue gun to apply some glue. And then the last thing that I'm going to do on this is I'm going to take some stickers and we're going to spell out the word love on the top. And there we have another really sweet six by eight by four mailbox. And you can see just how stinking cute this is. It's perfect for Valentine's Day. It's perfect to sit by the front door if you want a place to collect your mail that's really cute. Use some different theme paper and this becomes a mailbox for any season, any reason, any one. So I am going to bring that first one back in so that you can see just how gorgeous these are. If you are watching this video from another YouTube channel, please make sure that if you decide to do this on your channel, you do it as a project share because a lot of time, work, and effort did go into designing and then putting the whole thing together. So please be courteous and do it as a project share and redirect your viewers back to my channel for the actual tutorial. Thank you so much. And if you have liked this video, and I certainly hope that you have, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.